All right, so at this point, we're going over the chapter four review. And the sub should have read through the definitions on the first two sides. Make sure you study those and you get note cards if you want bonus points. When we get to the top of the third side, where you have to do the copying of the figures, don't forget to look at page 170. Once more, page 170 shows you how to go through and actually do those constructions. I will show you briefly for the angle. If this is our angle, we're going to start by drawing just a regular line segment. We are then going to take our compass and starting at a point on this angle anywhere, we're going to make a curve. Keep it the same setting, make the same curve. Then adjust your compass so that it goes from here to here. Make a mark. I need to see that mark on the original. Go over to the new one you have and make a mark. Then connect this through that X. Again, page 170 will show you this. That's copying an angle. Make a curve, make the same curve. Go from here to here with your compass, make a mark. Go over here, make a mark, and then connect them. Copying a segment, on the other hand, is much more difficult. We start with a segment, and we will make a line bigger than our original segment. We take our compass, and we hold it from one end of our original segment to the other and make a mark. Go to one end point of your new segment and make a mark. That is copying a segment. You really should be able to do that. Again, page 170. The third situation is copying a triangle. And let's take a look at how we do that. Let's say we start with a triangle. Doesn't really matter what it looks like. We're going to start by drawing a line with our straight edge. And then we're going to measure that bottom segment. So let's say from here to here, make a mark. Go from here to here, make a mark. That'll be the same as this base. Now one of our triangle congruencies is side, side, side. So if I make three sides of the same length, I'll have two congruent triangles. Let's readjust, go to this triangle, start at this point, put your pen up here in your compass, make a mark, start at the end point here, make a mark, go over to here, switch, make a mark, go over to here, make a mark where it intersects, and then connect. So what I did was I copied the bottom segment here, by just taking my compass from here to here and making a mark. I then measured the length of this segment using my compass like that, made a nice big curve. Then I went to this side, readjusted, made another mark, did the same thing here, and wherever they intersected, that will be the top of my triangle. Page 170, I'll show you these as well, and if you run into other trouble, again, please feel free to call me. The big thing I wanted to make sure of was that you knew how to do these proofs. So let's look at the bottom proof here, where we have that I is the midpoint. Let's look at our diagram. Let me start a new page, just so that it looks nice and clean. So let's start with our diagram, which is going to look like this. This is W, I, T, H, A. My given is first that I is the midpoint of AT, and that AT bisects WH. Make sure you write down the given just as it is. We need to be very, very particular about this proof. We're trying to show that WA, excuse me, yeah, WA equals HT. If I'm trying to show parts of triangles are the same, 
I'm going to use CPCTE. My first thought, two triangles, parts the same, use CPCTE. So I've got to show the triangles are congruent first. How do I do that? Well, let's look. Let's think about what I know. I is the midpoint of AT. So without even really thinking about how I'm going to prove it, let's start with what that means. That means AI equals IT. By definition of midpoint. I'm not even thinking yet. All I'm really doing now is writing down what my given tells me. Now let's think about the second thing. AT bisects WH. AT bisects this angle, this segment. If it bisects the segment, it splits it into two, exactly, equal segments. So we're going to say that WI must be equal to IH by the definition of, well, it's going to be bisector. Because it says it bisects it. We have the midpoint, so definition of midpoint. We have bisect because of definition of bisect. So let's make our marks here so we can kind of take a look and see what we've got. Now I think I want to show triangles congruent, but I've got only two segments equal. What else do I know? Well, wait a second. These are opposite rays because they're lines. Let's label this angle 1 and 2. And say to ourselves, self, what do I know about angle 1 and 2? Well, they're opposite rays of each other. So they form vertical angles. So let's say angle 1 and angle 2 are vertical angles. That's by the definition of vertical. Remember, the definition of vertical doesn't say angle, those angles are equal. The theorem does. So we have to start by saying they're vertical. If they're vertical, then we can say they're equal. That's by theorem 6, exactly. So first they're vertical, then they're equal. So now think about what I've got in my diagram. I've got those angles are equal. This side equals this side, this side equals this side. I go back. I'm trying to prove triangles are congruent. There are three ways I can do that right now. Side, angle, side, angle, side, angle, or side, side, side. I have a side, an angle, and a side. The triangles have to be congruent by side angle side. So we'll say triangle, let's go AIW is congruent to triangle, remember the order, this side and this side, so TIH by side angle side, sometimes referred to as sassy. Now I've got side, angle, side for the triangles, but if the triangles are congruent, the parts must be equal. And so my final step will be that WA as soon as the computer works here, that WA equals HT. by C, P, C, T, E. Want to show parts are equal? Show the triangles congruent. How do you show the triangles congruent? Use your given. Q, E, D. That which we wanted to prove. Don't make it difficult. Read the given. Where does that lead you? If you need to go back, have the, the substitute, make sure you go back and look at this. Let's go to the next page. On top of the next page, we have that T is the midpoint of EH, and I have that EA is perpendicular to MT, and UH is perpendicular to TQ, and that is all given. I want to prove triangles are congruent, triangle EAT and HUT. I'm going to draw my diagram right up here. And you have yours already labeled. 
So let's start with our given statement, which we know, and then let's move on to, before I even start to work about thinking, I'm going to say, if T here is the midpoint of EH, what's true about ET and TH? Well, definition of midpoint says they're equal. So we can start by saying ET equals TH by definition of midpoint. Very easy way to start. And right there, you're already starting to get into your argument. I want to prove the triangles are congruent. I can either do side, angle, side, angle, side, angle, or side, side, side. I'm going to use what I'm given. So let's think. I also know that AE here is perpendicular to MT. And I also know that UH is perpendicular to this as well. So that means... What kind of angle is this angle here and this angle here? Well, they have to be right if they're perpendicular. So let's say angle e A, E, T is a right angle, and angle U, H, T is also a right angle. And this is going to be by definition of perpendicular. You could use theorem 7 here. I probably wouldn't because it's more than one right angle. If you wanted to label those angles 3 and 4 or 1 and 2, that's fine as well. But make sure you label on your draw drawing so that when I look at your proof, I can know what you're talking about. If they're right, then we know they must be equal, of course. Angle AET is equal to angle UHT by corollary to the definition of right. Which again says all right angles are equal. Now if you want to say they're 90 and then they're equal by substitution, that's fine. But you don't need to. Corollary definition of right, nice little helper there. Let's think, what else do we know? Oh, wait a second. Let's label this one, I'll label it 1 and 2, those angles right inside there. Well, they're vertical. So we can use Angle 1 and angle 2 are vertical, by the definition of vertical. And if they're vertical, we know they are equal, by theorem 6. Now we have this angle equals this angle, this side equals this side, this angle equals this angle. And we can say, without any doubt, the triangle EAT is congruent to triangle HUT, HUT by angle, side, angle. And there, ladies and gentlemen, is what we wanted to prove. Again, go back if you need to catch up on something there. But use what you're given. Think about what you're trying to finish with. Am I going to use angle, side, angle? Am I going to use side, angle, side? What do I know? What are the relationships? Let's go to the next proof. I'm going to start with my given statement, and I've got my diagram here, which is O, S, T, this is S, this is T, and this is I. My given statement is angle O is equal to angle T, and angle I is the midpoint of OT. And that's given. I want to prove triangle SIO and SIT are the same. Okay, let's think about this. Hmm. I want to show SIO and SIT are congruent. Well, let's think about what we know so far. And I'm going to mark O and T are the same just so I don't have to worry about those. And then I'm going to think I is the midpoint of OT. Well, if I is the midpoint, it does something. It splits it into two equal parts, so I can say that OI equals IT without really thinking. Definition of midpoint. All I've done there is use my definition. So now I've got this the same as this. Let's think. What else do I know? Well, I might go ahead and say that SI equals SI 
if I reflex it, and that's reasonable and true. And now some of you are going to make a mistake here. You're going to look at this and you're going to say, oh, I have two sides and an angle, so this must be congruent by side, side, angle? Well, wait a minute, we don't have one of those. The angle's not in between the two sides, so it won't work. So the only thing I could do here is I can say, I don't have enough information yet. But I do know one thing about this. If I look at this triangle like this, and I say this angle equals this angle, this is O, this is T. What's true about the opposite sides if the angles are equal? If the angles are equal, the opposite sides must be equal as well. So let's use that. OS equals ST. You can do this by theorem 10 because the opposite angles are equal, so the opposite sides are equal. You could not do anything until you used these other sides. Now I can say triangle SIO is congruent to triangle SIT by side, side, side. Because I do have a side, side, side. I do not have a side, side angle. I have a side angle side, but that's only if the angle's in between. Hey, wait a second. So if I had wanted to do it this way, I could. But I also could have left out this step altogether, and then I wouldn't have this middle side equal, but I would have a side, an angle, and a side, which would change this to side, angle, side. Because I didn't have to use this middle se segment. Either way is fine. I'm just saying be careful not to use a postulate that we don't have. We have angle, side, angle, side, angle, side, 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 side. Either way here, this works and the proof is done. Don't make this difficult. It doesn't need to be. If you get stuck, you can always go back and change something. Do your proofs in pencil. Definitely helps. Okay, that leads us to another proof. Make sure you're copying everything down. Next one. We look at the bottom of this page. We have this figure, which is H O R T, a segment here. We're going to say one is that we have T O bisects both H O R. Excuse me, this should be an N. So OT bisects angle NOR and it bisects angle NTR. And this is given. Some of you may go, oh, well, it's a square, so all the sides are the same. You don't know if it's a square. All it says is it's a quadrilateral. Don't assume it's a square. There's not enough information. What I can say is this. I know what a bisector does. And I'm trying to prove right now two segments are equal. NT is equal to OR. But if I look at this very carefully, hmm, to do that, I need to show the triangles are congruent. So let's start by saying something about what these angles do. Well, since it bisects it, it makes this angle and this angle the same. And since it bisects this, it makes this angle equal to this angle. So I can say angle 1 is equal to angle 2, and angle 3 is equal to angle 4 by definition of bisect. Because I want to prove the triangles are congruent first which means I need to show, or to show that the segments are equal. Let's see, what else do I know? Well, I've got this angle equals this angle. I've got this angle equals this angle. Is there anything these two triangles have in common? TO, they both have TO. 
TO equals TO by reflexive. Step four. I now have an angle equal an angle, a side equal a side, an angle equal an angle. So triangle, let's do it in order. TON is congruent to triangle TOR by angle, side, angle. And so my final step here would be to say that NT equals OR by CPCTE. Q, E, D. Triangles are congruent, parts are equal. Or are they? I put this proof in this review packet and many years back, I had a student point out to me that there's a mistake. You can't prove N, T, and O, R are the same from the given information here. They're not corresponding parts. And C, P, C, T, E talks about corresponding. I left this on here, hoping, one, that some of you would notice it, and two, pointing out a very common mistake. N, T corresponds to R, T. So I could have proved this if I was saying these two were equal. But I cannot prove it saying OR and NT are equal. Because OR does not correspond to NT. Make this correction in your proof. Make sure you watch out for things like that. Okay, let's go on to the next one. So, next question we've got is, well, let's do it in a pretty color red. W, O, L, E. And I'm going to say my given statement is EW is equal to W, O, and L, W bisects angle E, W, O. That's our given. This is L, W, not angle W, by the way. What does it mean to bisect a segment? It splits the segment into two equal parts. What does it mean to bisect an angle? It means to split the angle into two parts. Be really careful. That's a distinction that a lot of people make mistakes on. If it says it's bisecting the angle, it's bisecting the angle. It doesn't make any segments the same. So let's start with our given and look at that. And I'm going to go ahead and mark that on here. EW equals WO. What am I trying to show? I'm trying to show the triangles are congruent. Well, let's think. Now, LW bisects this angle. So I'm going to use that first. I'm going to say these two angles, I'm going to label them 1 and 2. If you want to use three letters, you can. I'm going to say angle 1 is equal to angle 2 by definition of bisect. Now, some students will say, Oh, it's bisecting this angle, so it's bisecting down here too. No, it isn't. We only know it bisects this angle. Be very careful about that. Then I say, okay, what else is common in these two triangles? What do they share? Is there anything they both have? Well, oh, WL. WL is equal to WL by reflexive. That works. And then EWL must be congruent to OWL by side, angle, side. And this is step four. So don't make this difficult. Look at what you've got and look at what you know. Now wait a second. Some of you are saying, but Mr. Persons, I didn't use WL. You know what I did? I said since these two sides are the same, that angle and that angle are the same, 
So I left this part out, and I used these two angles, and then I said angle side angle works. Because it's this angle and this angle, this side and this side, this angle and this angle, congruent by angle side angle. That works too. So if you left this out, and instead said angle E equals angle O, and so this was the same by angle side angle, that works too. Both ways work. Either one is perfectly acceptable. We have two more proofs to do, and then we're finished with this review packet. Next one. We have this diagram. We have this is P. This is A. This is G. Excuse me. This is I. This is N. I'm going to say P is the midpoint. of AM. I'm also going to say that angle A equals angle N, and this is all given. I'll write a little bit bigger after this, but that's the given, so you can see it. I'm trying to show that AJ equals NI. I've got to remember, okay, how do I show parts are equal? Show the triangles congruent. Let's see what we've got. We've got the angle A equals angle N, and I have P is the midpoint of AN. If it's the midpoint of AN, then it splits AN, and only AN, into two equal parts. So I can say AP equals PN by definition of midpoint. It doesn't do anything to IG, so don't make that error either. It only splits AN into two equal parts. What do I want to show true? AG and NI are the same. How do I do that? Well, huh. I've got this angle equals this angle. I've got this side equals this side. I don't know anything else about sides. I don't know anything else about angle. Oh, yeah, I do. Those are vertical. Let's call them angle 1 and angle 2. Angle 1 and angle 2 are vertical. <coughs> By definition of vertical. And if they're vertical, then we know they are equal. By theorem 6. Well, if I've got those angles are equal, and those angles are equal, and those sides are equal, well then, angle side angle. Triangle A, P, G, watch the order, A to P to G, N to P to I, by angle, side, angle. And if the triangles are congruent, then what's true? Parts have to be equal. AG equals NI by C, P, C, T, E, our good old buddy that helps us prove corresponding parts of congruent triangles are equal. First, use the midpoint. No brainer, you don't have to think about that. Second, realize they were vertical. Said they were equal. Triangles are congruent. Parts are the same. Shouldn't be difficult, guys. If you want to practice these, take a blank sheet of paper, write the given and prove, try to do it. If you can redo what we did in here, you're going to be all right. We have one last proof. I know some of you are sad about that, but don't worry. When I get back, I'll give you lots more. The very last proof in this packet. We've got these two figures. We have that this is the same as this, this is the same as this. We've got our given is that triangle, even today, the computer could be slow. Triangle NST and triangle ETW or isosceles. We have that NS equals EW. So let's mark these on here. N, S, T, 
E, W, and this is all given to us. We also have that T is midpoint 